Hi there, everyone. Welcome to The Daily Gardener. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's May 14th. Most gardeners share a common secret. They never feel like they know enough about gardening to call themselves an expert. If you feel this way after years of gardening, you're not alone. Over two centuries ago, Thomas Jefferson sent a letter to his friend, the painter Charles Wilson Peale. He was lamenting the limitations of his garden at Monticello, and he concluded with one of my favorite garden quotes of all time. But though an old man, I am but a young gardener. Here's today's brevities. It's the birthday of Mary Delaney, born today in 1700. Her family had forced her to marry a very old man when she was 17. To make matters worse, when he died, he didn't include her in his will. Despite her lack of inheritance, love came knocking on her door. She was 43 years old, and she married a doctor named Patrick Delaney. Her family wasn't excited about this idea, her getting married again, but she did it anyway, and they moved to Dublin, where they shared a love for gardening. When Patrick died, Mary was widowed again. This time, she was 68 years old. She hit it off with Margaret Bentink. Bentink was the Duchess of Portland. And it was thanks to the Duchess that Mary got to know Joseph Banks and Daniel Solander. When Mary was in her early 70s, she took up decoupage, which was all the rage at the time. And she created these marvelous depictions of flowers. Today, historians believe she probably dissected plants in order to create her art. Botanists from all over Europe would send her specimens. King George and Queen Charlotte were her patrons, and they ordered that any curious or beautiful plant be sent when in blossom so that she could create her art. Her paper mosaics, as she called them, were made out of tissue paper. She created almost a thousand pieces of art between the ages of 71 and 88. And if you ever see any of her more spectacular decoupage pieces, you'll be blown away at the thought of them being made from tiny pieces of tissue paper by Mary Delaney in the twilight of her life in the late 1700s. Today in 1796, Edward Jenner injected his gardener's son with cowpox. The boy's name was James Phipps. He was eight years old. Jenner injected him with fluid from a cowpox blister. The blister was on a milkmaid named Sarah Nelms, and she had contracted cowpox from a cow named Blossom. The word vaccinate is from the Latin word for cow. And it's the birthday of John Kushney, born today in 1943. Kushney was a landscape designer, writer, and broadcaster. He was a tall, good-looking Irishman. Listeners were often surprised to see just how handsome he was after listening to his voice on the radio for so many years. Kushney became a household name in England once he became a regular panelist on the show Gardener's Question Time for 15 years. Kushney was 66 when he appeared on the show for his final broadcast right before Christmas. He was enjoying his first week of retirement when it was cut short by his sudden death from a heart attack on New Year's Eve in 2009. On the show, Kushney cultivated a wicked sense of humor. He was not a fan of poinsettias and he reacted to a discussion about dogs peeing in the garden by saying, the dog is simply marking his territory. The only thing a male dog will not kill is a lamppost. And when asked about lawn damage by playing children, John said, let the children play. They aren't young for long. Many times his ultimate response to a problem posed by a gardener would simply be, just dig it up.
In unearthed words, it's the birthday of Harold Glenn Borland, born today in 1900. Borland was a chronicler of the seasons. Borland wrote an editorial column in the New York Times for 35 years. His last column appeared the day before he died in 1978. He never signed his work, but everyone knew it was written by Borland. Like John Burroughs, Borland had a sympathy for and simple communion with the natural world. Here's a sample of springtime, according to Borland. The violets will come in their own time. That is all that was written in the sky by Friday's equinox. The sun's summons will not be answered overnight, but the answer is inevitable. The first hungry bee at the first crocus hums of June, and the first green leaf forecast cool summer shade. All is in order. Spring is the earth's commitment to the year. And here are some of Borland's most famous sayings. No winter lasts forever. No spring skips its turn. April is a promise that May is bound to keep. Knowing trees, I understand the meaning of patience. Knowing grass, I can appreciate persistence. You fight dandelions all weekend, and then late Monday afternoon, there they are, pert as all get out, in full and gorgeous bloom, pretty as can be, thriving as only dandelions can, in the face of adversity. Today's book recommendation is Mrs. Delaney, Her Life and Her Flowers by her niece, Ruth Hayden. In 1980, she wrote this book, and it was reissued in 2000. There's a link in the show notes to the book on Amazon where you can find used copies for under $10. For today's garden chore, we're going to slow things down by growing them in part shade. Yesterday, we talked about herbs that grow in shade, but shade can also be used to slow down the growth of some herbs and plants that can grow too quickly in full sun, the ones that can get away from you. Think about basil or Swiss chard. I always plant these in my southern kitchen garden, but I've started to plant a few backup containers on the east and west sides of my house. They will grow slower there, but that means that I can be more leisurely about harvesting as well. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. When I was researching Borland, I came across this little passage he wrote about Potophyllum peltatum, the May apple. In a painful time of my life, I went to a wooded hillside where May apples grew by the hundreds, and I thought the sourness of their fruit had a symbolism for me. Instead, I was to find both love and happiness soon thereafter, So to me, the May apple is the mandrake, the love symbol of the old dealers in plant restoratives. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced weekdays in lovely Maple Grove, Minnesota. You can find complete show notes over at thedailygardener.org. And be sure to share the show with your garden friends. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, and of course, Facebook. While you're over at Facebook, don't forget to join The Daily Gardener community. Just search for these three words, Daily Gardener Community. The group will pop right up and then request to join. Finally, I want to thank my team at Podfly Productions, where my fabulous editor is Eric Begay. Have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.